All right. Um, well, excited to be back out here. Players had yesterday off. Um, come out here and compete and honestly get ready for the Eagles. What went into the decision to part ways with you? Um, you know, it was a, it was a decision uh, between Elliot and myself really to give the younger guys an opportunity to go out there and, you know, get more reps and show what they can do. Specific to his health, uh, I know he dealt with a knee injury coming into last season, sat, seemed to sap a lot of his explosion. Is that something that you just felt like wasn't going to get better here? Uh, I mean, that's part of it. Um, at the same time, we just want him to get healthy. He still has some good ball left in him, and I wish him nothing but the best. Now you've had some time. What do you take from that first one into this week in practice? Say that again, sorry. Now that you have some time to watch it and everything else, what did you take from that first preseason game into this week that you want to... Yeah, the, the first game was really, at least for me, obviously you want to go out there and coach the game, but also just see operationally how everything uh, was working, whether it's the communication from the booth downstairs or from coach to coach. Those were definitely things that you know I just wanted to see for myself. A couple things to iron out there. Uh, from a football perspective, I thought those guys went out there and played hard. They flew around. Uh, once again, it doesn't matter who's out there. It's about the quality of the reps. And this week we'll have uh, starters playing a lot more. Considering he didn't play much the other night, how big of a week is this for Drake in practice, with the joint practice? All that? Yeah, for all the quarterbacks, it's a huge week for those guys that really show development. Drake will play more this week for sure. Um, but don't, don't forget, you know, anytime you practice against a team, like you'll, they'll get a lot of good reps against someone else. Um, and based on that, we'll see how we'll, you know, how we'll play in the game. That's all positions, though. Now that you've had a chance to go back and watch the film, um, what – did you see from Joe Melton kind of seeing it a second time? Yeah, you know, just, you know, watching Joe, you know, run around and that athleticism is always a, a welcome sight. Uh, and saying that, there's still things for him to work on. Um, one thing would be ball security. <laughs> you know, I know it looked cool, but, you know, it's always a dangerous thing swinging the ball around like that. But this is a guy who's working hard every single day and, and getting better. Kind of building off Dan's question a little bit, how do you anticipate maybe the energy, the intensity, the work? kind of changes this week as you get closer to regular season? Yeah, you know, this week, um, we all, well, first of all, in practice, we're going to be wearing the same color. And I think it's it's good to bring, you know, to have joint practices to break up the monotony of the week, or sorry, of training camp. Um, but hopefully you continue to see the team gel together and, and guys taking a step forward. Gerard, last week, there's a lot of reporting and stuff about the Brandon IU, but I want to ask you about him specifically, but there is this sort of notion that maybe certain players don't want to come to him. New England is no longer a destination. And as a former player head coach, one, how difficult is that? But two, does it also sort of speak to what you guys have to build to when it comes to the on-field product and just making this maybe more, you know, appealing? Yeah. Look, we're, all, we're always trying to get better. Um, I think Ayuk's still in San Fran right now and some other teams. Uh, he can go to some other teams as well. Um, what I will say is, look, when we start to win games, guys will want to come here. When we start to establish the culture, establish the roster, I think guys will, will be excited to come back first game as a head coach for you when you went back through it maybe with Evan or however you do it game management wise yep. what did you learn it was great um look it was the first time I had four channels on my on my headset right and so Evan and I have a dedicated line and and we we talked through uh talked through things during a game that you know would come up during the regular season we didn't necessarily approach those situations that way um but it was good the communication was good um between the special teams coaches the offense and defense so it was good just a follow on that I, that one play at the late second quarter before the two-minute warning. Is that an example of one where you would hurry up to the line in That's the regular right. season, but That's you right. decided not to? That's right. Yeah, and, and there are certain situations in these preseason games where – you know, sometimes you're like, well, let's just run our two minute drill, even though there's six minutes left. So you're trying to do different things and uh, against different teams and just see how it kind of works out. Did anything surprise you with that? You know, kind of along what went on in the game, what went on the whole day. Anything surprise you or um, maybe? Uh, easier than you thought, harder than you thought, or just kind of managing your time? No, honestly, I felt I felt like I was in my element. And I said this after the game where I didn't have to really worry about substitutions and, and things like that. It was it was more of a holistic approach, and, I mean, I enjoyed it. You mentioned four channels. Evan's got one, but the other three just offense, defense. Yeah, doesn't yeah. Oh. McCordy's, so. <laughs> and you know, so, <laughs> no, no. But, you know, like, the special teams coaches in the past didn't have headsets here. And so now they do have headsets because I think it's important that we're all tied in. That's just my philosophy. I saw Slater on the sideline, and it looked like he was on a headset, but also 
talking to guys, is he going to be an important conduit for the players and the coaches? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's important for him to have a headset, and he's been helping with the special teams as well. Remember, his role is like this umbrella role, whether it's advisor or coach, whatever you want to call him. But he's always there to help, and uh, I think he did a good job. We've seen Murphy and um, Nick did some work as backup centers behind yeah. David. How would you assess that group behind the starters? Yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. You know, David's been doing it for a very long time, and some of these other guys, they just haven't done it. They played more of a guard role. Um, but, look, they're getting better at it. The coaches are doing a good job spending that extra time working on snapping. And you always want to have someone else on the, you know, one or maybe even two extra guys that know how to snap the ball. Jeremiah Barnes played offense a couple of years in the past. Um, what kind of look did he give your defense when he was doing that? And what does it say about his Ter defense? Terrible look. Ter <laughs> <laughs> he's not an offensive lineman. But what I will say about Farms is, you know, he's, uh, you know, the more you can do type of person. He's always trying to help no matter what you ask him to do. He just loves football, whether it's playing offense, defensive line, on the practice team, like whatever it is, uh, this guy's going to give you 100%. So I appreciate it. What did Layden Robinson show you in the film review? Um, that we still have a long way to go. Uh, those young linemen, it was their first opportunity, and we're looking for that growth. You know, whoever we're talking about, we're looking for that growth from week one to week two. He's a guy that obviously played more right guard in college, uh, playing more left the last few days, I would say, game in practice. Are you getting more confidence that he might be able to do that? Yeah, I do. I do think those guys will be good players. I think Layden's going to be a good player for sure. And once again, the more you can do it, um, it's, it's good. Now, this week against the Eagles, they got some big guys in there, so uh, it's going to be a huge test for them. Matthew Judon was on the sideline a lot, um, kind of helping coach a few players during uh, the team. After everything that kind of happened over the last week or two, what was it like to see that from him during the game? Well, to me, it's not everything that happened over the last week or two. It's one day, and I think we all, you know, have – a bad day every once in a while, but he was dialed in. He was excited for the players, and he was coaching them up on the sideline. Uh, no complaints from me. Any update on the PUP guys, health-wise? Uh, Kendrick? Uh, look, those guys are progressing, uh, some faster than others, but when they're ready to get out there on the field, they'll be there. Right. how's the relationship with Alex Van Pelpen? Sounds like he gave me the autonomy to make a decision. Not the decision, but give me input on what you guys want to do offensively a bit prior to the preseason game. Yeah, yeah, our relationship has, has been great. Um, look, he is the head coach of the offense. And, you know, once again, we meet about these things all the time, and sometimes things change. And, you know, you know people want to say, why didn't Drake play this much or that much? But we had a plan, and we have a plan for this week as well. And you feel comfortable with Do your thing. I'm yeah. to you to, to make these Yeah, for the most part. You know, you know, when I watch other teams, I, I may give them some ideas. And, look, I may not necessarily know all the lingo, but, Look, we need to get the ball in this space. Or we want to run the ball this week. He's open to all that stuff, and uh, I, I, uh, we're on the same page. Go to go back to the game management stuff for a second. I'm just like a big picture. How will you decide when to go for it on fourth down this season? Is that Evan saying analytics say go, go, go? Is nah, that a deal thing? How do you decide? Look, Evan does a good job with all that stuff, but ultimately it's my decision. Um, and every game, it's its own game. So that's how I would approach it. Two final questions. You mentioned Matthew Judon just uh, – I know you've spoken about being in a good place with the relationship as far as the off-field contract negotiations go. Do you feel like that's also in a good place right now? Uh, I would say so. I mean, look, he understands he's under contract, and we expect him to be out here at practice and when it's time for him to play, to go out there and play the game. Coach, Darian Lowe's gotten a lot of run with the top offense. I'm wondering what you've seen from him, both on the field and in the preseason. Yeah, I mean, look, this is one of, one of the quietest offensive linemen I've ever been around, but this guy goes out there every single day and improves. Uh, he has great athleticism, great length. Uh, and look forward to seeing them against you know better competition. We'd be remiss if we didn't ask about you, actually. Um, can I just yeah, excuse that? Yeah, we talked about you. First question. All right, good. Maybe I should get it. <laughs> <laughs> you got caught in traffic, Sunday traffic. Thanks, guys. See, I should have asked myself. <laughs>